Yo people, how's it going? I am sat here with Elder Bro. I'm going to kick off a new little just mini series um, which is going to be in a slightly different vein than the usual videos because I feel like it's a good time to put out some a little bit more informative shit so it's going to be fitness related so there's a disclaimer I know there's a lot of people that watch my channel for well the other shit but that's cool you don't have to watch it's sweet right now I'm kind of just getting my head down doing some work and waiting on May for a couple of holiday, holidays and shit so I thought it was a good time to kind of try and put out some videos that are a little bit more informative um, just gonna help some brothers make some gains and shit I'm gonna try and put stuff in a generally quite simple uh, understandable uh, terms like kind of layman's terms I don't want to go into too much detail I'm wait for the plane to go over That with your arm will get a thumbnail. So I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to bore you, I don't want to bore myself, and um, my internet's powered by a fucking hamster in a wheel or an ant sat on the roof with a tinfoil hat or some shit holding up a nine iron. Um, and it takes the piss to upload, whatever. Okay, so let's do it. Building muscle whilst losing fat. Obviously, it's the ideal, isn't it? It's the fucking dream, man. If you can build muscle whilst getting leaner, then, you, you know, can do it, you've it? smashed it, man, you know. Um, so the answer is just get on a fuckload of gear and that's it. All right, see you later. No, just kidding. Um, so, who can do it? Well, sadly, not everyone. And there's a few, there's a kind of set of... Special circumstances, yeah, that rare. make it more uh, likely or feasible. Um, so one of those is having the potential to make noob gains. So not having lifted for very long, um, either being relatively new to resistance training, um, or being kind of new again to it after having a lot of time off. So you're either able to make noob gains if you've never really lifted before much or you've kind of got muscle memory on your side which is probably a topic I might cover in another video but either way you're still able to you still have quite a large potential to make natty gains yeah another constraint or requirement that would make it more likely is having a relatively high body fat percentage now it doesn't have to be that high because we both kind of done this in recent times if you look yeah. at my um, pictures a little further back from uh, Aust when I first went to Australia I was carrying a bit of fat I was probably up maybe 13 14 percent body fat at one time maybe 13 I don't know I was tanned so it wasn't that bad and I knew that I'd done this kind of build muscle and lose fat or recomp as people call it which stands for recomposition which is just altering your um, body composition um, I knew I'd done this because I looked a lot leaner and wasn't that much lighter. So also I had, I had a client fairly recently, uh, shout out to that client, forgot your name, but uh, comment if it was you, who uh, messaged me saying, oh, you know, I've lost this much weight. Oh, no, sorry, I've, I've dropped like 6% body fat, but I've only lost like two or three pounds, um, which obviously means that to equate for that, they must have built some muscle whilst doing that. And yeah, we Mike's also experienced it, and you know, yeah, many times over the years, we mm -hmm. probably both have a lot because being inconsistent. Yeah, even by accident, yeah, a lot yeah. of the time. You know, it's like you take a bit of time off. That that initial, uh, you know, first month or so when you get back into it, you're like, fuck, this is not yeah, so bad. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, the typical approach is bulking and cutting. Which I would say, in general, if you do it right, if you have good control of your calories, that's the most efficient way. Um, and so, how bulking works, generally, on average, you're in a caloric surplus. So if you take any chunk of time um, and add up your calories in versus calories out, then there will be that will be a plus figure. And through training... Uh, resistance training, hopefully applying a progressive overload and um, having a pretty good grasp of your macros, you will 
ensure that the, mo the majority of weight gained as a result of that surplus is muscle. Now, on the other hand, cutting, you spend a lot of time, imagine this is your maintenance under the line, so in a deficit, um, and on average over any given, not any given, but over a long period of time, you're gonna be averaging um, more calories out than in. Mm -hmm. And as a result, again, as a result of weight training, you have skewed the, the kind of scales in a way such that the biggest portion of the weight lost as a result of that deficit is going to come from fat loss uh, rather than losses in lean mass or muscle. Yeah, because obviously through training and stuff, um, you've kind of, it's stupid pseudo scientific terms, but you kind of said to your body, I need this muscle. Yeah, you know, I'm using it, bro. Yeah, I'm using it, so don't fucking use it. Yeah. Um, okay, so doing both at the same time. Now, let's say I'm eating at maintenance. That just means that on a, on average, my daily expenditure is roughly the same as my intake. Now, just as a caveat to that, when you total all your expenditure, it doesn't mean you have to get on the treadmill and burn 2,500 calories. You know, every, there are so many bodily like functions, like breathing and your heartbeat and stuff that attribute that. Uh, you know, you have to factor into that. Um, however, within that day, there will be periods of time where if I add up my my calories in versus calories out, it would be in the plus, and also periods of time where it would be, you know, below the line, um, and that's just the case. That's just going to happen around meal times when you haven't eaten for long, when you've just mm -hmm. done a lot of exercise, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you are training consistently with sufficient intensity, uh, applying progressive overload, then you can make sure that when you're in that surplus, same as when bulking, you are skewing towards anabolism. Mm. And same with deficit, so that when you're in a surplus, the majority of those calories are hopefully gonna go towards muscle growth and repair. And when you're in a deficit, the majority of calories burned or used up by your body are going to come from fat, adipose tissue. Now, obviously, that's where the your body composition comes into play because when you get to a certain level of leanness of course you're going to start prioritizing differently say if i'm carrying around a shitload of excess fat so therefore excess calories then when i'm in a deficit it makes sense that those calories will be called upon called upon however if i'm six percent fucking body fat it's gonna be a lot harder for, or I'm a lot less likely to prioritize fat me metabolism mm, over, you haven't got a lot of it. over the breakdown of muscle tissue, yeah. And your body wants to I hold on to it. Yeah, I think to, no. to continue the bro science, the simple way of putting it. Yeah. So, who should do it? Uh, or who should aim for it? Do you want a reasonable go? thing to aim for, really, you can't guarantee it, but generally, by default, you should be aiming for it anyway, because in the same way that you're trying to lift heavier and heavier weights during a bulk to get stronger and to stimulate that growth, you should be applying the same principle in order to preserve lean body mass while you're dieting. So, merely by applying that and applying progressive overload, the same as you would when you're bulking, or as close to as similarly as possible, you should be, um, if it's possible for you to make a gain in a deficit, if you're part of that circumstance that we just discussed, it will then happen as long as your training is intense enough. Yeah, cetera, cetera. exactly. In a sense, it is just the same as a load of bulk and cut phases. So imagine six month bulk and cut phases, but just condensed down into a, a much shorter time period. Yep. Now, um, what I would say is the size of your deficit will have an effect on this because if you're in a ridiculously high deficit, it's going to be hard to kind of fuel the workouts to Basically, you're gonna struggle with increasing your lifts um, or even maintaining them. Mm -hmm. And without that, because you need to be able to do that 
to build muscle and gain strength obviously you need to be able to apply progressive overload so your deficit cannot be such aggressive. that you yeah it cannot be too so aggressive yeah. that you are in this uh, yeah and so it needs to be a really slight deficit i would say um yeah because it com comes back to prioritizing as well the same as like as you i had some uh some quite bad well they were quite um inhibiting injuries recently with my back and so on and my groin which meant i couldn't do much lifting so i completely sat lifting off for a number of weeks perhaps a month or longer um, and I started to get back into it, applying quite a shallow caloric deficit because I didn't want to look fat and not lift. It's probably stupid of me to to, yeah. to cut whilst whilst injured and, and not well. training. And as a result, I did lose a bit of muscle. Now, as I got back into it, it's kind of like a new stimulus for my body. I've also got a slight caloric deficit as well. So I definitely. I think it's fair to say I did do a bit of a recomposition. Oh, definitely, yeah. Because uh, I was getting leaner, um, yet my weight was staying steady. Yeah, yeah. And also you got stronger as well. Didn't you? Yeah, I did. I'm, I'm making strength gains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say that it's not as efficient as doing straight up bulk and cut phases. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really only going to be appropriate for people who've got a longer time period and are just, just gonna do it generally, gradually. You see this a lot with girls actually, um, who start lifting, but don't really have that much of a grasp of their calories, but because they've just got into lifting and now it's, it's cool, now we squat every day and do fucking yeah. donkey kicks, man. You know, um, then you see it happen with them and eventually they think I'm toning up. You know, which yeah. is kind of what's happening in a way. You, well, you are well, increasing the tone is, is different, but, but um, this is what happens because by accident they just do it because lifting weights is enough of a stimulus to ensure that they are skewed towards anabolism, mm -hmm. um, so that when you're in a surplus, the surplus is in your favour, and, and same same with a deficit. Also, um, sometimes you, I think this is how people who carb cycle. Um, this to kind of explain how um, people who carb cycle can also sometimes you see people make gains and do a, do a recomposition um, because they are spending time, they are basically just controlling uh, more strictly when they're in a deficit and a surplus but one thing that you would have to consider with that I feel is um, how your carb cycling and therefore because really it's calorie cycling mm. you know, yeah. uh, how that coincides with your split because if if it's over the same time period as my split, what would happen? It's just a one thing to consider, man. It's just a thought. What would happen if I tended to be around maintenance or in a surplus for the days, like the day or two either side of, say, a chest workout mm. or say a push workout, mm. um, but then my lower carb days always coincide with the day after my legs you know would that affect it and it's possible that it maybe it will yeah, maybe that, and that it. it's probably the basis for all this like nutrient timing and mm. probably shakes after well, workouts yeah yeah like yeah that. perhaps um, is there anything else we need to mention so uh, let me think is it hang on so is it a realistic uh, thing to aim for Yes, it is if you're relatively high body fat percentage, particularly because you'll find that if you're new to lifting, you'll lose a load of weight, and then underneath it, you'll think, oh, you know, I don't, don't, I didn't think I had this muscle, and you may not have, you may, you may have built some because you have that extra surplus of calories to always call on. For most of us, I would say if you're it's not experienced. It, it's you, you now you have to be. You'd also have. To You'd also have to be so on point with your training, you know, if you're going out getting fucked every weekend, it's going to be hard, man. I don't do that anymore, man. It's going to be hard to, you know, really stick to your, your training regimen with, with enough kind of consistency. Yeah, 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 it's not going to be optimal, is it? Is it? Because that's going to really affect your lifts and stuff and you need to be, all the times you need to be progressing with your, with your lifts and stuff, yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, I suppose if if you're part of the one of those two groups, like 
just getting into lifting or coming back after a time off, just be aware of it and just be aware that like you can really maximize that initial phase again to your advantage and really just hit the, your body hard like and yeah hope for the best like just be aware of it that those first few weeks or whatever back into lifting or starting lifting uh probably you probably want to take advantage of them just like you want to take advantage of say a refeed when you're cutting like the day after maybe train something difficult like back or legs that takes a lot so if you fall in the category of person who is maybe able or more likely to be able to do this um how should you do it i would say a small deficit so maybe I'd go as small as maybe a two, well, the thing is, maybe 200, 300 calorie deficit. Yeah. The thing is, the deficit can be any size, as long as it still enables you to progress with your lifts, because that's the main thing you want to be focusing on. Um, because if you're progressing with your lifts whilst losing fat as a result of your deficit, then the chances are you're going to be building some muscle, um, provided yes. that your lifts are in the right kind of rep ranges to yes. promote hypertrophy. Um, so, I would say a small deficit, maybe two to 300 calories. Um, I would say, okay. if you're not sticking to a fucking program, ideally stick to a program, if not, at least track your weights and apply progressive overload. You know, keep some first exercises and some um, and rep range is the same for long enough to accurately record um, and track progression. I'll go into that a little bit more in the next video, but yeah. Um, what else? I would say in terms of macros, keep your carbs as high as you can possibly get away with because that's gonna enable you to make those strength gains in the gym. Yeah. And it's not, don't get caught in the trap of thinking, oh, People ask me how many car, you know, how much carbs should I be on if I want to cut, and they don't even mention calories, you know. And people say, "Oh, you're cutting on 350 grams of carbs, or you're cutting on yeah, yeah, man, because it's the carb is not the enemy, man. It is your friend." And so, I'd say protein and fat at your minimum requirements, which is a little bit up in the air, but I'll go into that in another, in another video, maybe. But personally, I would say about 0.8 for your protein grams per pound. That's plenty. Uh, especially if it's only a slight deficit um, and with fat I'd say maybe 15% of your calories you know. ah, that's the lower end thingy that's quite low yeah end. but maybe 20 15 to 20% uh, I think that's going to be perfectly adequate rest carbs fill the carbs um, also obviously just eat good shit man that's going to make you feel good and not going to fuck you over everything that's going to promote performance in the gym basically mm -hmm. um, what else? Refeeds, just yeah, again, Sleep, like what you said, recover. make sure they're primarily made up of carbs. Refeeds are shown to be most effective when you when it's carbohydrate overfeeding as opposed to fat Super, or protein. Yeah, caloric. Superior. Yeah, so just keep your protein and fat. You could even go a little bit lower on protein and fat on your refeed days. You want to really maximize your carbs. Like. I think that's it. Mm. Alright, peeps. Uh, I hope that was in some way. Uh, a contribution towards you making some gains and losses the same and time. losses Maybe. simultaneously if you have suggestions about shit you want to talk about I've got ideas for a few more videos um, then post in the comments below like my fucking videos buy everything that I'm gonna fucking say whatever like just give whatever see you later kids Jordy Lenny is my hero